Welcome. We are here. It is before the show with the great Scott. My name is Jeffrey Morrissey. I am joined by the wonderful members of Wolf Alice. Guys, can you just introduce yourselves to our uh, listeners? Hey, I'm Joe. I play the drums. I'm Ellie. I sing and play guitar. I'm Joff, and I play guitar. Wonderful. Well, welcome to Boston. You guys are doing a run of shows before the new album comes out in September. Uh, what inspired you to do these? These are more intimate than your usual shows in the States, which is kind of nice for all the people that get to come. Yeah, I think the smaller and the sweatier the shows, the more fun they are for us, really. So we wanted to, you know, uh, we, you know, whilst we're like learn- finding our feet with these new tunes, like play some more kind of punky venues. Well, and then the road is always sometimes a little bit of a tough place when you're away from home for a little while. What do you do to make the, uh, the great open American road feel more like home? Sleep. Sleep? That's well, a good one. It's a bit different now that we're on this kind of bus because you wake up and you're already in the next place, you know. But back when we were touring in like a splitter van, it was, uh, it was really cool the first time. I really remember just like looking out the window all the time and just seeing outside, which is really interesting for somebody who's never been there before. And then the next time I just played Halo. <laughs> for like six weeks. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Passes the time quickly, doesn't yeah. it? So you guys picked two singles, Yuck, Foo, and Don't Delete the Kisses. What made you guys choose these songs as singles to come off the next record? Why did you want us to hear them first? Uh, well, Yuck, Foo was the first thing to come out, and we really wanted to kind of come out with a bang. You know, we hadn't released any new music in a very long time, and we, it seemed like a good fit, you know? It kind of went, we felt like it would, you know, it would kind of maybe shock people and um, be a good first back tune, it's short, it's loud. And then with Don't Delete the Kisses, we thought we'd do the complete opposite from that and release the poppiest, kind of floatiest song. So yeah. Well, I was reading an interview about Don't Delete the Kisses, Ellie. I think that it was you that said this. You wanted to make a song that was head out the window on a long drive tune, and I wanted to try my hand at like a hold back nothing love song. So I have to ask, what is your favorite either long drive tune or hold back nothing love song? And that's a question for everyone if you all want to take a crack. Great question. Great question. Um, one of my favourite head out the window long drive tune is uh, Drinking in LA by Brand Fan 3000. Oh, oh nice, nice. Uh, yeah. uh, and then one of my favourite love songs is uh, there's a song by King Khan and the Shrines. I don't know if you've heard that band, and they have this song called I'll Be Loving You, and I really like that. It's really like garagey, but quite, you know, sensitive as well. It's nice. Uh, I can't actually think of a decent answer for the road trip one. That was a really good one. It was. There's a really great song by Arthur Russell. It's really sad. Mm-hmm. It's like a sort of. It's sort of a love song called "I Couldn't Say It to Your Face," and I think that's like one of the saddest love songs I've ever heard. Oh, for a love song, I think I'd say "Don't Think Twice, It's All Right" by Dylan. Yeah, it's a nice one. And a long car journey. I can't think of the ultimate one, but the only thing that spring, the thing that springs to mind is the first time, like Joel was saying, we were traveling around a splitter. We had that first War on Drugs album. Oh yeah. That's and that was one. that whole record is just the perfect. Just put it on, stare out the window. So I'm going to go with the first track, which is Under the Pressure. Nice. And then Kurt Vile and Courtney Barnett are going out on tour together and making music. That should yeah. be fun. They've made. I think it's Courtney Barnett and Kurt Vile and the Sea Lice, I think is the name of it. Okay. But they're at the least uh, coming around the States this fall. So I, that was one that I bought my tickets right away. That should be a really cool show. And what an awesome pairing, right? And now, speaking of that, uh, now all I can hear is like an Andre 3000 Wolf Alice like mashup, which I'm, I'm trying to picture in my head. That'd be really cool. Uh, th- that would be great. <laughs> well, so you guys released uh, 2015 album, My Love's Cool. We're getting ready for Visions of a life um what would you say are the biggest differences between the two albums you guys have heard one of them we haven't <laughs> oh, i don't think that it's too wildly different from my love is cool i think it's almost just hopefully like a step up from my love is cool you know we didn't um you know it's not such a change in direction mm-hmm. um with, so yeah <laughs> But you should still be excited about, about, about it. Uh, well, if it's better than My Love's Cool, that's a damn high bar. So I am very, very excited about it. And, and in sort of preparing for this interview, I was listening back to that record. And I was just struck by how well those songs have aged. Like things like Bros, As I Get Older, That Becomes More Relevant, or a song like Silk, it, it's the same thing. So how have you guys been happy with the music, how, how it's aged, if that makes sense? Has that been something that you're, you're sort of proud of? I'd be scared in two years if it's already aged. <laughs> That's not a good True. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So 2015. <laughs> Do you guys have, like, new meanings for them as you look back at it, or is it still kind of, like, fresh for you? I think we need a, couple, a few yeah. more years to develop that kind of hindsight. At the moment, you know, we're still playing them, and it's still really fun to play them. And I think, like, now that we have another album under our belt, we can see how much we've progressed, and, and you know, and, and but by no means... You know, did 
dislike the old tunes. Of course, of course. Well, it's a few of them, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you have any in particular that you were kind name, of... No names. No names? All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, no, so <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you guys could describe this upcoming album in one word, what might be the word that you would assign to it? Album. Album? Record? <laughs> Release? <laughs> Masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I, I agree with you, Ellie. Masterpiece. Masterpiece. <laughs> and if I could hyphenate, I would put modern masterpiece. <laughs> modern masterpiece. No, no, we're joking. <laughs> Joff is not joking. May the record show. It's, it's a hard question. What word would you give it? I haven't heard it yet. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd know. be happy to listen and give you a word. <laughs> <laughs> That's more than one word. Yeah, yeah, true, true. <laughs> All right. We, uh, time will tell. But speaking of modern masterpiece, Relaxer by Alt-J and a song that came out, 3WW, I did not realize that that was your vocal, Ellie, for like a really long time. How did that whole thing come out? Because I think that's my favorite song that's been released this summer. Yeah, it's a really good... <laughs> uh, yeah, we have the same manager. It's not a very romantic story. But, That'll do um, it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the tune and... Um, when they asked me, I listened to it once and was like, definitely, I'd, I'd love, I'd love to be on this tune. It's just sort of like I remember. I, it's one of those things that every time I listen to it, I pick up something new. Mm. Um, but yeah, definitely an incredible track, and uh, looking forward to uh, hearing your new album soon. It is called Visions of a Life. Again, if you haven't been paying attention, um, but you guys do an amazing job covering songs. Uh, Steal my girl. I have that downloaded onto my phone. I, okay. I listen to that so often. You might be the only one. <laughs> really? No, because I'm struck by how amazing that cover is. How do you guys choose to cover songs, and how do you make them your own? Uh, to choose that one, but I didn't want. Really? Well, they don't let you. It's like part of a thing they do called the Live Lounge, and mm -hmm. they, you have, it's quite restrictive on what you can pick. You know, it has to be like in a top 40 or something. Mm -hmm. But um, it's really fun covering songs. Um, we did one recently, which I think actually might be my favourite one, which is of, of a Carol King song that Ellie really liked. It's called Way Over Yonder. Oh, wow. And you just learn so much more about songwriting by just seeing someone else's idea of what a song could be like and stuff so it can be reset like it's a really good example of like learning your craft i think it's learning other people's yeah no totally totally true and you know i'm always envy envious of british radio it just seems like it's so much of like a step up like bbc radio one i just feel like is always some like bar that american radio has yet to achieve wow no i think you guys over here are incredible like really? the special yeah. the different tiers of radio you have mm. here kind of you know every city's got a bunch of different radio stations that all have their kind of you know community vibes and things yeah. like that some of them do the pop thing some of them do the alternative thing yeah i think you guys are doing a pretty bang up job yeah it's great i'll take the compliments where i can get them um present company excluded do you guys have a favorite radio station in the states um i do love the guys in columbus at cd 102.5 they're great they've always they've been like championing us since the beginning and they're really fun they put on great shows and like randy who runs the station literally picked it up out of the gutter kind of thing and has built it up into this really really respected and really fun radio station they've got like a bar in the in their offices and stuff people like come in and like joff said it's it's a community you know and obviously you guys as well. Great. Yes, yes. I, I, I didn't want to put you guys on the spot there. I Fine, know. you're the best one. Fine, all right. All right. Yeah, exactly. We have it on record. There we go. Um, now, you guys do a ton of these interviews, which, as journalists, we're really grateful for. It must get really fucking boring at points, though. What do you guys wish the journalist asked you more often that you got a chance to talk about? Would you like to go now? <laughs> Would you like to go now? That's my next question. Don't worry. <laughs> um... I don't know, it's not always about the questions, it's just like kind of the atmosphere that's yeah. created and stuff. And I'm having a nice time. Yeah. Good. Let's hang out, fill the door. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what we, that's, lock that's what we strive for. Lock, lock the door. Lock the door. <laughs> exactly, we're staying, we're, we're depriving everyone to show, we're staying here all night. Um, well, this will be my second to last question. Um, what are you guys listening to right now? Who has your ear as you're uh, driving around? Hmm. Um, what have I been listening to? Uh, I just downloaded the new Haim record, so I'm oh, excited to listen to that. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I so, listened so to some of it whilst I was like kind of getting ready to this morning, and I found myself kind of dancing around. So it's I need to give it, you know, a proper listen. But it seemed really fun. It seemed very. Um, I like them because they do kind of uh, they can do really pop, and then they can do quite kind of guitar-y based mm. alternative rocky, mm. which is you know I like an album with some variation. So. I'm actually really liking this new Arcade Fire stuff. 
Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm really liking it. And I, I, I've always been a fan, but like, I kind of zoned out when it got to that reflector stuff. But this seems pretty like driving, and every song's just like a massive beat and a massive hook. So yeah, I'm into that. I've been locked out of my Apple account, so I haven't bought any music for a little while, which has been a bit frustrating. So just been listening to that on YouTube. Uh, that, um, Theo made me listen to the horror record on the way here, oh, yeah, and I actually really liked that. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, H O nine or something like that. Nine, nine. Yeah, they're wicked. Check them out. We totally will. Well, this will be my last question. Would you like to go now? Great. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. All right. No. Well, then I gotta say. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I know. Well, I'm fucking rude. <laughs> well, it, it's the American way. <laughs> so this, it, it, I guess, I'll be the one to cut it off here. Uh, I've been joined by Wolf Alice. Their new album, Visions of a Life, is coming out September 29th here in the states on RCA Records. Do the thing right now. Pre-order it. You won't be disappointed. And if you have not been listening to My Love's Cool recently, check it out. You will again not be disappointed, guys. One of my favorite bands. Thank you so much for taking the time for us Thank today. Thank you very much. Woo!